Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. In today's training, we are going to be learning the three mistakes you need to avoid if you want to start a successful blog. The three mistakes to avoid when starting a blog. And by the time you master this, uh, master how to avoid these three mistakes, you would have succeeded in growing your blog. I made so many of the mistakes I'm going to be teaching you today, and it kind of hindered me from a selling faster in my blogging career. I wouldn't want you to make the same mistakes. So I'm going to be showing you three things you must not do if you want to start a blog that will blow in the future. I use the word blow simply means a blog that will become successful in the future. All you need to do is to follow this channel. In this channel, I always teach everything you need to know about starting and growing a successful blog. So if you are just coming in here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell there so that you can get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you for following me. Okay, let's move right into it. So the first mistake you need to avoid is that you must stop using lengthy domain name. What do I mean by lengthy domain name? Lengthy domain name like mine, you see my right here, entrepreneurbusinessblog.com, is lengthy. If you are starting a new blog, do not repeat the same mistake I made when I started mine. I used a long name. And one of the dangers of using a long name is that people might mistake your name for something else. Like I said here, that using long, overly complex domain name increases the risk of typos or misspelling. Some people want to write about entrepreneur business blog, they will mistake it for another thing. Or it will affect you in so many ways. It might not just be uh, entrepreneur business blog, it might be other lengthy names. So avoid the use of lengthy domain name. It kind of hinders the speed at which your blog grows, at which, uh, also the speed at which people remember your domain name. The second one is that you should keep it simple and sweet by using just one or two words maximum. As you can see here, I use three words, entrepreneur, business, blog. That's three words. You can as well use just two words or, a, or one word. So if you can get a, a name that is just one word and is also easy to spell and easy to write, go ahead and use it. It is better than using a lengthy domain name. And you can even sweeten the deal for yourself by using a single word or two words that is a, 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 a keyword in the niche you are targeting. So let's assume I'm trying to run a blog in the business niche and I come up with entrepreneurniche.com. That's in line with my niche. Entrepreneurniche.com is in line with my niche. So if I run a blog in that area, it's easier for people to remember my domain name. I said here that you should keep it short and simple. And the next one is that the ideal length of a domain name shouldn't be more than 15 to 17 characters. If you check my hair, it's over 20 characters, which is not ideal. So do not make the same mistake when trying to start your own blog. What I was trying to achieve here was to use the keyword I'm trying to target in my blog, in my domain name, which is Entrepreneur Business Blog. And to a large extent, it helped me because if someone is searching for Entrepreneur Business Blogs online, my blog is likely going to rank for that. But at the same time, it's, it is more difficult to build a brandable name around that keyword because there are majorly two ways of generating a domain name. Is either you use brandable keywords or you use a combination of keywords. Brandable keywords has to do with uh, what we call brandable domain name has to do with a, a name that you generated by yourself and is also short and simple. A typical example is the word Tesla, Facebook, Google and the rest of them, they are brandable domain name. They are very simple to spell and easy to remember. So when you choose a word like that, even if you are the one that created it, so long as it's easier, easy to spell, easy to write, easy to pronounce, go ahead and use it. It's going to perform very well on search engine. Number two mistake is using the wrong permanent structure, using the wrong permanent structure. And the question in your mind is, what is a permalent structure? Let me quickly go to one of the blogs I managed for someone and show you what it means so that I can see before I'll come back to this. So these are the various permalent structures. We have one, the one called plane. We have day and name. 
we have month and name, we have numeric, we have post name, and we have custom structure. So let's dive into the, one of the blogs to show you an example. So if you log into your blog, you go to settings, under settings, that's where you see your permanent structure. The moment you set up your blog, the first thing you change is the permanent structure before you start posting on the blog. So the moment you are done integrating the blog, of course, if you want to learn how to integrate your domain name with your web hosting platform and also your uh, uh, how to install WordPress, there's a, there's a video around this channel. I will leave the description below so that you can click on it to watch how to do it. So the moment you are done setting up the blog, the next thing you do is to change your permanent structure. Just go to settings, click on permalinks, click on select post name. Normally, you, it's always around uh, the default setting is somewhere either this or this. The default setting is either this or this. And let me tell you something. The 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 uh, unfortunate thing about this powerless structure is that the moment you set up your powerless structure and start posting, you can change it again. If you change it again to any other powerless structure here, you start having broken links. And the more broken links you have in your blog, the more Google will derank your site, and it will affect the user experience of your audience. So. Set up your powerless structure the moment you are done installing WordPress in your blog. So this is the best one to select. It's called post name. Post name. Just once you select post name, you scroll down and do save changes. And it's very simple. Most people don't know it, and that's why they are making a huge mistake in their blog. So do not make the same mistake I made when I started my when I started entrepreneurbusinessblog.com. I didn't know about the importance of formalist structure. So I went ahead to use day and name, where the year will be mentioned, the month will be mentioned. And uh, okay, I think I use month and the name, month and name, where the year will be mentioned, the month will be mentioned, and the post name will be mentioned. In fact, this one you see here, plain, is the worst. This one, the number one here is the worst. Don't ever use it. It's even easier to use month and name that to use this one here. This is the worst one to ever use. So, but it's better you do it right from the beginning. Always use post name. And what is the advantage of using post name? I'll give you a few of them. When you do your research, you find more. One of the advantage of using, one of the advantages of using a post name is that you can actually republish a post that you published many years ago and it will come up on the top as a fresh post without altering your link, without altering your URL, without altering the, the, the URL of that particular post. It won't be altered. So the moment you post an article, maybe you posted that article in 2020, and now the article is an evergreen content. You want to republish it again in 2023. Remember when you posted it in 2020, it, it has already been indexed on search engine. If you republish it again in 2023, add more information to it and publish it as a fresh content while maintaining the same URL that it had before, it comes up again as a fresh content. And one of the things you know about Google is that Google gives preference to fresh content. So remember this article has already been indexed before. Now it's coming back again as a fresh content. It gives you double advantage over over your competitor. So it's a good way of growing your blog. So you can write articles. Let's say you publish 100 articles in 2022. In 2023, you can just go back to all the articles you've published before, add more information to it. If you stop at 1,500 words per post, you can upgrade that article to 2,000 words per post or 3,000 words per post. Republish it again as a fresh content. It comes to the top of your page as a new article because you can change the dates right inside the body of the post. You can change date without the URL being altered. So it comes again as a new post on your, on your blog. The same thing happens on Google and you start ranking for those keywords that you just recently added. And of course, every single time you, pub you, you update a post, you go back to your your search console and re-index the post, re-index it, telling Google that there's a fresh information in this page, please index it on 
search engine. So these are the various uh, permanent structures that we have. They are the best that you can use to grow your blog. So when setting up your blog, do not make the mistake of using the wrong permanent structure. Let's move to the next one. Then the last one, not the last but not the least, is failing to choose a single niche. If you are setting up a new blog and you want that blog to perform well, please, we recommend that you choose a single niche. And a single niche here means that you have to niche down. Don't go into a broad niche and start trying to target everything. It's not going to work. In those days, uh, gone are the days where you can write a blog that, that uh, or, uh, run a blog that speaks about everything and succeed. If you try it now, you are not going to succeed because the competition is very high now. So look at the major niches I just listed here. They are not the only niches that we have. There are so many other niches out there. But you see these niches here. They are still broad. Insurance as a niche is still broad. So if you want to run a blog within the insurance niche it, and you want the blog to get indexed on search engine faster, you want people to start uh, paying attention to what you are doing, the best way to do it is to choose a single niche within, let's use the word a sub-niche, within the insurance industry. You can decide to run a blog on life insurance. Remember, your goal is to talk about insurance in the future, but you have to pick one angle first. So you can start with life insurance or auto insurance or yoga insurance. You talk about it to a large extent. Before you know it, it even helps you to get Google AdSense faster. In fact, this is one of the secrets to getting approved for AdSense faster than any other way. So use it in your blog and it will help you. If you want to talk about business, you can pick one aspect of business. You can pick something like e-commerce. Even within the e-commerce space, you can pick only drop shipping. You can pick importation. Just pick one aspect of e-commerce. You can even pick logistics. Talk about that aspect very well until your blog has been able to get massive audience within that niche. Some platforms will begin to classify your blog as e-commerce blog, top 100 e-commerce blog, top 100 logistics blog, top, uh, top 100 delivery blog, different things about the space. So you have to pick one angle first. If it's health, you can talk about sexual health alone. Even within the sexual health, health, you can talk about only men or only women. So you discuss that area in depth before moving into other aspects. What I always recommend is that you go narrow before you start going broad. So pick a niche, go deep down into that niche. If it's finance niche you want to talk about, you can pick only loan. It's still within the finance niche. Talk about loan so well that they begin to classify you as one of the top 50 loan blogs. Or you can talk about budgeting. Everything about the blog is about budgeting before you can start diversifying into other aspects of finance, where you can talk about savings, you can talk about investment and the rest of them. The same thing applies to scholarship, the same thing applies to travel, the same thing applies to digital marketing, the same thing applies to social media. Don't just go into this major niche. And the worst thing that can happen to you as a, as a new blogger is to start writing all these niches I wrote here at once in your blog. It will be very difficult for you to get approved, not just for AdSense, it will also be difficult for you to rank well on search engine. If you can go niche, if you cannot niche down into just a single niche like life insurance or auto insurance, it's better you pick insurance as a, as a topic and talk about everything that relates to insurance. But insurance as it is, is still broad because the competition is very high. Even though it has one of the highest CPC, but the competition is very, very high. So that is why niching down to one aspect helps your blog to grow faster. These are the three top mistakes you need to avoid in order to grow a successful blog. If you make this mistake before start or, or when you started your blog, you are likely going to encounter a lot of challenges. But if this is your first time of setting up a blog, you are lucky because you are not going to be making these mistakes if you follow what I've explained here. If this is your first time of watching my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notification by clicking on the bell icon so that you can get notified every single time I drop a new video. You can watch some of my previous videos where I talked about how to pick 
a successful niche, how to choose a successful blogging niche. Watch that video very well so that you don't make mistake. You don't just rush into a niche because everyone else is doing it. There are strategies you need to understand. There are uh, uh, tricks you need to understand for you to succeed in any niche you want to go into. Thank you for watching my video. My name is Emily K. Manuel. See you in my next video.